shall leave you broken, broken heart. Avatar The Last Airbender is the best show that I've ever watched. Not only is the story amazing, each character deep and dynamic, the animation beautifully done, and the humor on point, but it almost entirely succeeds in what I appreciate the most, its world building. I'm going to focus a lot more on The Last Airbender than Korra because I think the first series better develops and uses its setting. Here's a separate video about how Avatar is realistic fantasy, which I found very interesting and has a lot that overlaps with this. Avatar's world was developed in a way to make us believe that everything that's done in the series is realistic, despite the fact that the characters can utilize what we would consider to be magic. Assuming that we're willing to suspend our disbelief, and it's a TV show so most people are, there are hardly any times when the mechanics in the show break the immersion. And isn't keeping immersion the ultimate goal when it comes to world building? It's not magic, it's water bending. And it's yeah, yeah, an ancient art unique to our culture, blah, blah, blah. The show demonstrates something that many martial art shows struggle with consistency. Even though we may think it to be magic, bending in Avatar is more of a science. There are specific rules that determine how bending works. You can only bend one element. You are either born a bender or you are not. You need a source of your element to be able to bend it. How do the firebenders bend at night? They could still bend when Zhao killed the moon spirit, and it can't be the stars because then they would be able to bend during the eclipse. I digress. Mentally, bending draws from emotion, philosophy, and wisdom. Physically, each type of bending is a form of martial art where training and repetition will turn you into a master of it. The show sets up the rules of bending without having to explain most of them to us. All we get is the explanation in the title sequence, The Avatar, master of all four elements, and some exposition about the Avatar's role in the world. Bending and the technological advancements involved with it clearly evolve throughout the show. Toph independently discovers metal bending. The Fire Nation gets a hold of war balloons that utilize fire bending. All this happens in a way that feels believable because it doesn't break the rules that the show has already set up and presented. The presence of bending in the world of Avatar is what drives the history and culture of the people that inhabit it, which makes it so much more believable. Plus, each nation was shaped by their respective abilities. The Fire Nation underwent an industrial revolution because of their ability to generate power. The Earth Kingdom has massive walls and grand architecture because earthbenders would easily be able to create and maintain these structures. The Northern Water Tribe creates all of its structures out of ice and has several canals and locks in place because they can manipulate the movement and freezing of water easily. The Southern Water Tribe lives like Inuits because they lack the resources and benders to build such structures. The Air Nomads built temples which would be completely inaccessible to anyone except an airbender. Even the philosophies of the benders are different. Most firebenders are portrayed as hot-headed, destructive, and power-hungry. I'm starving! Some are portrayed as wiser than that, being bright and balanced. All of these are personifications of fire, just in two different lights. The waterbenders are largely easygoing and adaptive, like a stream, but can be unforgiving and harsh like the ocean. The earthbenders are seen as steady, grounded, and realistic, though stubborn and unwavering. The airbenders tend to be the opposite nimble and idealist. But just like in real life, these ways of thinking are built from the attitudes that the resources at our exposal require of us. If society is built on people having the capability to throw massive boulders at each other to solve their problems, then it makes sense for those people to seek out direct approaches in solving their issues. You've got to stop thinking like an airbender. If a society is made up of nimble people who can dodge anything life throws at them, it makes sense for them to avoid conflict. To us, in the real world, the ability to manipulate the elements like this is nothing short of magic, but in the world of Avatar it is common and rather well understood. This is a technique used often in science fiction, make what would be extraordinary in our world seem ordinary in theirs, so their regular world fills us with awe and wonder. And Atla does this correctly, as bending is so ingrained in the world that not only is its magic amazing to us, but so is the setting itself. This is how you write a hard magic system. But it'd be hard to understand the world of Avatar The Last Airbender if it weren't so familiar. There's the obvious mashing up of real world animals so we know exactly what we're getting just by hearing the name. 
but every aspect is similar to us. From a young age, most of us are familiar with the idea of the elements. My generation learned them from Pokemon, and we have already been introduced to the cultures in some aspects, as the Fire Nation culture consists of Japanese imagery, which fits the imperial nature of it to someone who knows Japanese history. The Earth Kingdom is very Chinese, the Air Nation's culture is similar to that of Tibet, and the Southern Water Tribe is very Inuit in culture. Even the landforms, while not realistic to the real world, reflect these places in real life. Of course, the entire show must be based around something. The Avatar. As the bridge between the spirit and mortal worlds, the life of the Avatar is the most extraordinary thing of this extraordinary mortal realm. Though I personally don't find the spirit worlds too unique or particularly creative, the fact that it is seen as a divine or fantasy-esque world within the world of Avatar gives the mortal realm more believability and helps to provide for more extraordinary things in the universe than bending. However, the spirit world does not require much consistency, which makes what happens in it seem truly beyond the scope of a normal person. If the base world of Avatar were set up like the spirit world is, it would suck. But because the spirit world has a lack of explained mechanics and set rules on how it operates, the normal world seems that much more scientific and believable, especially when you're looking at the spirit world from the perspective of a normal person, like in the episode with Heibai. My name is... One of the most interesting things I think about the world are the exceptions. Not everyone belongs to a nation, and a massive population can't bend at all. So the writers have to add in more elements that complement these seemingly unspecial people to make them unique and important. Right, Sokka? The series is full of instances where benders, cultures, nature, non-benders, and spirits all interact in a way that doesn't seem forced or too expository. While the true genius of Avatar The Last Airbender lies with its characters and their stories of loss, betrayal, honor, love, and most importantly, redemption, I think that if the world were not built in the way that it was, we wouldn't care as much as to whether or not the town of Zhanghui were saved from the polluting factory. And we wouldn't care if the drill went through the outer wall of Ba Sing Se. I think giving us a mystical world that we are more than willing to immerse ourselves into makes the whole experience much more fulfilling. And sure, it's not perfect, but it's pretty damn close.